from Fox 55 Sports. This is the locker room. Smash my football. Smash my football. Let's go. Here we 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 go. In a warm welcome inside the locker room, my name is Peter Hood, flying solo dolo on this Halloween Eve. Justin Prince, as you can see, is in the holiday spirit. He's dressed up as the uh, invisible man tonight. Well done, Jay Prince. Time to punch some tickets, shall we? Two dozen local high school football teams were still alive coming into the night. The goal for all 24 of them to make it to the month of November. If you do that, it means you're playing for a sectional championship next week. Let's get to it, shall we? It is your game of the week. We begin in Class 6A. Snyder traveling to take on Homestead. The Spartans are defending sectional champions in sectional three. They come in ranked eighth in the state. They beat the Panthers badly at Spooler Stadium earlier this season, but Snyder let him know from the opening kick that this was going to be a much tougher battle. Tavarius Easley Jones fields it at his own 10. All he's got is the kicker to beat, and he's going to win that race. 90 yards to the house. It's 7-0 Snyder, just 13 seconds into the game. Later in the first quarter, same score. Snyder looking for more. Tyrese Brown, big gain into Spartans territory. That leads to a field goal, makes it 10-0 Panthers, but pretty much all homestead from there. On the ensuing drive, Evan Ormsby to Nate Anderson. Anderson. Got dudes touching the turf out there. First down, Sparty. And then moments later, this time, it's Ormsby to a wide open Ethan Chambers at the goal line. The Indiana State commit gets the Spartans on the board, and they roll from there. Homestead moves on with a 28-10 win. So the Spartans move on to play the winner of this game. Carroll traveling to take on Warsaw. Both teams went 7-2 and in the regular season. This game was as good as advertised. Pick it up late third quarter. Juan Jaramillo ties the game at 28 apiece. And then same score, fourth quarter. Tigers knocking on the door again. This time, Patrick Zollinger finds pay dirt, gives Warsaw the lead, and they hold on to it. How about the Tigers pulling off the upset tonight? 42 to 35, your final. Bump down to Class 5A, Sectional 11, Northside, playing host to Northrop. No fans in the stands for this one after the FWCS announcement regarding spectators yesterday. Legends led by two touchdowns at the half. Northrop putting something together on the first drive in the third quarter. That's Keani Bates to Dane Kilby over the middle. Later in the drive, some trickery. The wide receiver pass, and it's Kilby on the other end once again for the touchdown. Northrop pulls within eight. But back comes north side on the ensuing drive. This is a tough offense to stop. A lot of weapons. Deuce Taylor, he's the biggest one. Ryan Collins, first down over the middle. And then moments later, talk about another weapon. Taylor swinging out to Rodney Woods. And Woods does all the heavy lifting on this play. Breaks free down the sideline. Touchdown north. Legends, they get a little revenge on Northrop tonight. Northrop beat them two weeks ago. Legends win this one, 42-21, your final. Staying in sectional 11, Bishop Winger trying to punch its ticket to the title game. Saints welcoming Anderson to Shields Field. 
Indians got on the board early in this one, but it got ugly after that. Second quarter, Saints up a touchdown when Brendan Lytle goes over the top for Sam Campbell. That score puts Dwenger up by 14. Ensuing possession for Anderson. Indians trying to put something together. John Michael Fabini having absolutely none of it. Big tackle for loss for Fabini. Saints defense gets a three and out. Didn't take the offense long to find the end zone once again. This time Lytle keeps it himself. Finds the pylon. Dwenger all over Anderson tonight. 42 to six, your final. Saints will play north side next week. To class 4A we go. Couple of rivals meeting up in sectional 19 tonight. Defending champ East Noble traveling to take on DeKalb. This thing, folks, it was ugly. Not a lot of points in this one. DeKalb with the big stop there. They take over on downs, but they're not able to do much with it. Fumble on the handoff for a big loss on the play. They're facing third and long. They try to go for it here with the fake punt. That's not going to work either. Still 7-7 seven to seven this game at the end of the third quarter. East Noble, though, eventually goes on to win it, and the Knights move on 14-7, to seven, your final. So the Knights will get the winner of this game. 4A number 6, Leo, playing host to Northwood. Leo jumps out to a 6-0 lead early, but from there, the first half was dominated by Northwood. Ethan Evers here with the catch and run for the big gain. Then on the goal line, the Panthers able to punch it in. Ties this game up at sixes. Couple possessions later, Panthers again. This time, the keeper from Nate Newcomer. A newcomer to the end zone. Sorry about that. Northwood, 12 to six lead. But the Lions, couple of two-point conversions missed by Northwood, kept him in the game. And Leo goes on to win this one. 14 to 12, your final, setting up Leo versus East Noble next week. Another action in Class 4A. A couple tough road games for some SAC teams tonight. Southside goes on the road. They lose to Marion 33 of 14. Wayne hung with Delta, actually led at one point in the first half, but the Eagles eventually pull away. They beat the Generals 49 to 18. Move to Class 3A now. Good one in sectional 27 as 13th ranked Concordia visits an Oak Hill team that comes in on a six game win streak. Early on in the first, Concordia, it's their first drive of the game. They're able to cap it off. 11 yards, Amir Drew to the house. He punches it in, Concordia goes up seven to nothing. No kill though, they would fight back on defense. Next drive, Kadet's looking to go to the air, but Brandon Davis can't find anyone downfield. Eventually he just heaves it up, intercepted by the Golden Eagles. That gets him in position, but uh, Concordia's defense just way too good. They pitch a shutout tonight. The offense here, you're going to see the reverse to Cam Johnson. Concordia goes on to win this one 24 to nothing. On the other side of the bracket in sectional 27, 3A 7th ranked Norwell hosting McConaughey. This thing was one sided from the opening kickoff. Norwell up a bunch when we pick it up late second quarter. Eli Riley downfield to Luke Kraft, the sophomore. Put six more on the board for Norwell. They're up 35 to nothing. Just before the half, McConaughey trying desperately to get some points on the board here. Nolan Kelly scrambling, able to buy some time, but eventually it's picked off by Eli Riley, quarterback on quarterback crime. Norwell up five touchdowns at the half, and they would add to that lead in the third quarter. The handoff to Isaiah Breggy. He houses that, puts the Knights up 42 zip. Norwell cruises into the championship game, 49-7, your final. We'll take on Concordia next week. Staying in 3A, sectional 26, West Noble, winners of two straight, looking to keep the good times going against Jimtown. Jimmy's, though, we're having none of it. They march right down the field on the first drive of the game. John to Reed in from 18 yards out. It's 7-0 Jimmy's just like that. And on the very next possession for Jimtown, Lucas Baker able to make a play here, drops the Jimtown quarterback for a huge loss. Maybe that knocks them out of field goal range if, if they're playing anybody but Jimtown, but this Jimtown kicker's got a leg apparently. 47 yards for Isaac Daniels. Puts the Jimmies up 10 to nothing. They go on to roll 38 to zip your final. 
Elsewhere in Class 3A, Mishawaka Marion, they are probably the, uh, the team to beat in that class, or they're one of them, certainly. They go down to Tippecanoe Valley tonight and beat a good Vikings team, 41 to 24, your final. In Class 2A, one of the most intriguing matchups of the night, Bishop Lures paying undefeated and seventh-ranked Fairfield a visit. And they made this undefeated team look like, like a Little League squad. First quarter, Ramon Anderson into the end zone makes it 7 nothing Lures. Fairfield response here, handoff to Carson Abramson, carries a couple tackles for a big gain. That sets up Corey Lance to Dalton Kripe. He's going to race all the way into the end zone. That cuts the deficit to one. It's 7-6 to six Bishop Lures, but, but it was all nights from there. Anderson, once again, diving into the end zone, extends that lead back to eight. And then you're going to see Carson Clark to Brody Glenn. Lures goes on the road and beats Fairfield, their first loss of the year for the Falcons, 45-12, to 12, your final. And they will move on to play another NECC team. They beat the big division champ tonight, does Bishop Lures. They get the small division champ next week. Eastside beats Prairie Heights, 42 to nothing. In sectional 34, Wabash has already clinched its first winning season since 2015. Big test for the Apaches tonight as they take on 2A number 13, Bremen. And, and this is not a test the Apaches would be able to pass. Bremen already up 28 nothing when we picked this one up. You see Hunter Bennett somehow staying in pounds, getting across the goal line, makes it 35 to nothing Tigers. Wabash, they're going to need some magic if they want to come back in this one, and they get a little magic right here. Antonio Grant fields the kickoff at his own 10, gets some good blocks, and 90 yards later, all of a sudden, Wabash is on the board. They've got some life, but Bremen, they come right back. This interception from Austin McKenzie goes the other way for six. Wabash, their season ends tonight. They go down 63 to 13, your final. Down in Class 1A, Adam Central trying to make it to their sixth straight sectional championship game. Flying Jets taking on Triton tonight. This thing was all about the defenses early. Scoreless first quarter, Lane Linegrich blows up that play in the backfield. Moments later, you're going to see a, a whole host of Jets there to make the tackle on this sweep. AC, though, offense a little bit slow to get going tonight. Trying to take advantage of good field position, but Ryan Black gobbled up here by the Trojans. This game was scoreless after a quarter. AC goes on to win, though, 38-14. to They'll take on the winner of Southwood versus Caston, which will be played tomorrow morning. And finally, a big-time small school showdown in sectional 43. Top-ranked unbeaten South Adams visiting ninth-ranked Monroe Central. Golden Bears' only loss of the year came to the Stars. And spoiler alert, uh, Monroe Central is going to finish with two losses, both to South Adams. First drive of the game, you saw Christian Somerset with the big gain. That leads to this, James Arnold looking in zone for Drew Stutzman. Starfires jump out to a 7-0 lead, and they roll from there. It was 42-0 at halftime. South Adams wins 48-7. They'll take on Madison Grant next week in the title game. And finally, our play of the night takes us back to our game of the week. Nate Anderson, this kid, one of the best wide receivers in the area. Again, making defenders touch the earth. This was on Homestead's first scoring drive of the game. How about this move? Plan it and go, young man. Anderson and Homestead beat Snyder 28-10. They are on to the sectional championship game where they'll take on Warsaw.